welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Amy. Today I'm going to be doing a video that is a little bit different from what I've posted so far. Um, today I'm actually going to be covering the murder of Alicia McPhail. I do just want to put a little disclaimer that this video is going to go into you know some details that some people might feel uncomfortable listening to. It is about the murder of a child so please watch at your own discretion. Warning, there is a few things that I'm going to be talking about that is horrible, um, heartbreaking to hear and something that is just horrific and I would say that if you're younger than 16 then please don't watch this either. I'm going to be talking about things that you shouldn't be hearing and shouldn't have to hear about. Also, if you don't want to hear, please feel free to click out of the video and go and find something else to watch. I will be back next Sunday with another video. So yeah, please watch at your own discretion, but be warned there is going to be details in this video which are not nice to hear at all. So Alicia Sarah McPhail was born on the 22nd of October 2011 so she would have just turned nine last month. She lived in Airdrie with her mum Georgina and her younger sister Courtney. She had actually just completed primary two at school when this incident happened and our teachers would describe her as smiley and happy and said that she really enjoyed writing um, in school. That was one of her favourite things to be doing. She also loved things like gymnastics and baking cakes. When Alicia was only three months old, her mum and dad actually separated and her dad, Robert, lived in Rothsey on the Isle of Butte with his girlfriend, Tony, mum, Angela and dad, Callum. Rothsey is a small town on the west coast of southern Scotland with only a population of around 6,500 so it is a very small town and I think it's one of those ones where a lot of people know everybody, you know, you know your neighbours, you know the people who live around you and Alicia would visit her dad and the family every other weekend and on the 28th of July 2018 it was no different although Alicia was actually going to spend two to three weeks as it was the summer holidays. So she went over with her dad on the 28th of July and three days had went by, you know, doing things, spending time together. And on the 1st of July 2018, Alicia went to bed that night with Peppa Pig on the TV. And at around 11 o'clock that same night, Tony went in to check on her and found she was asleep. So they all went to bed and the key was left in the front door. But this was not uncommon for people in Rossi to do. As I said, it was seen as a very safe town. Um, everybody knew each other and the crime rates weren't high. The same night, around five minutes away from the McPhail residence, a 16 year old boy called Aaron Campbell was hosting a party. Um, he had 15 friends of his round to his house and they were all drinking and getting drunk together, doing what a lot of teenagers these days do. The party finished around midnight, but one of his friends actually returned back to the house at around about half past 12 and found Aaron in bed and said that he was suicidal. Aaron had explained to his friend he was feeling a bit upset because he'd been arguing with his mum a lot of the night and his friend was a bit worried about him so asked him if he would like him to stay the night to which Aaron said no, he just wanted to smoke some cannabis. You might ask why I'm saying that but it'll all make sense in a little while. On the morning of the 2nd of July 2018 at 6am, Callum, Alicia's grandfather, woke up to get ready for work when they discovered that Alicia was no longer in her bed asleep. So he checked around the rest of the house and still she was nowhere to be found. 
her bike was still out in the back garden and it just wasn't like her to run away. Um, she had never done it before. So he decided to wake Angela up, Alicia's grandmother, and they both notified the police at 6.23 that Alicia had gone missing. The rest of the family went out to search and Angela actually posted on Facebook to encourage people to look out for Alicia and to let people know that she had gone missing. Tony had then looked at her phone and realised that Aaron, who was having the party around the corner, had tried to phone her that night at 1.47am and 1.48am. So she tried to phone him back and got no answer. And at 9.01am, Aaron replied via text message and said, sorry, doesn't matter, with two laughing faces. To which Tony then replied, telling him about Alicia's disappearance. And he responded with, oh damn, I'm sure she's not went too far. So Police Scotland and helicopters were all out searching for Alicia and a Coast Guard volunteer started to search the shoreline at 6.55am. He then actually discovered a kitchen knife on the shoreline and it was quite close to the McPhail house. Then at 8.54am, local man George Williams called the police to notify them that he had actually read Angela's Facebook post and that he actually found the lifeless and naked body of Alicia just 15 minutes away from her dad and grandparents house. Georgina, Alicia's mum, was still in Airdrie, 70 miles away and actually learned about her daughter's death through Angela's Facebook post. That's no way for a mum to find out about their child's death. She hadn't been contacted, as far as I'm aware, to let her know that Alicia had even gone missing. So by the time she found out, they had actually already found Alicia's body. She was then escorted to the Isle of Bute. So a bit of background on Aaron Campbell. Aaron Thomas Campbell was born on the 7th of May 2002 in Shrewsbury, England and moved to the Isle of Bute when he was around four years old with his mum Jeanette, dad Christopher and a younger sister whose name I actually couldn't find. Sources say that growing up Aaron actually did suffer from both emotional and physical abuse and he also had a history of self-harming and depression but he was really popular in school, regularly attended parties with a lot of his friends and got drunk with them. Um, he also enjoyed gaming. However, a lot of the games he was playing included a lot of violence and he was particularly interested in Slenderman. Now, when he was 15 years old, he apparently said that he would consider doing something excessive. And it was found that he had sent a Facebook message to one of his friends saying he might kill one day for the lifetime experience. So, Aaron actually knew Robert and Tony, which you might have guessed from the fact that I said Tony had missed called Strom on her phone. He knew them because he had previously bought cannabis from them. However, he hadn't bought from them since early 2018 because Aaron's mum actually intervened and stopped that. So after Aaron's friend had left when he returned after the party, as I said, Aaron said to him that he wanted to go and smoke some cannabis. So he had messaged several people, including Robert, and that is why he had tried to phone Tony at 1.47 and 1.48 a.m. However, at 1.54 a.m. Aaron decided to leave his house with the intentions of stealing some cannabis. So he left his house and walked to Robert's house. He then proceeded to enter the house where Alicia's bedroom was one of the first when he walked in. So Aaron walked in and found Alicia sleeping in her bed. He later said that he saw this as a moment of opportunity 
and also a quote from him was all I thought about was killing her once I seen her so Aaron then lifted six-year-old Alicia out of her bed while she was still asleep and left the house without anybody noticing he then proceeded to carry Alicia along the shoreline and she actually woke up um, during this and asked him who he was and Aaron told her that he was a friend of her dad's she was going to be okay and he was taking her home well he certainly didn't take her home he certainly didn't make sure she was okay in fact he wasn't even much of a friend of her dad's he just had bought cannabis of him before so he was more of just an acquaintance if anything he continued to carry Alicia to a secluded area, which I believe was behind an old abandoned hotel. It was wooded and a lot of trees and things like that. Aaron then continued to rape and brutally murder Alicia. So as I said, a local man called George Williams had found Alicia's body on the 2nd of July at 8.54am. The next day, on the 3rd of July, a post-mortem examination was then carried out. It was determined that Alicia had received 117 injuries to her body, some of which were believed to have been caused while she was still alive. The injuries to her face and neck showed that she was probably gripped quite hard and the injuries to her mouth and nose indicated that she was also smothered. So, a bit of a warning here, the next thing that I'm going to say is horrific to hear so if you do want to skip on a couple of seconds then please feel free to do so but the pathologist also said that her genitalia had catastrophic injuries however the cause of death was actually determined to be significant forceful pressure to the neck and the face so following the autopsy on the 3rd of July Police Scotland actually launched a murder investigation. There was a lot of police still patrolling the island and a lot of the island was actually still cordoned off as well. Police did believe that the murderer was still in Rothsey. So that's probably why there was still a very high police presence. Jeanette Aaron's mum had seen the request for information that was put out by the police. And following this, she decided to go ahead and check her home CCTV camera footage. This is where she found CCTV footage of her son Aaron leaving and returning to the house twice in the time that it was believed Alicia had gone missing from the house. So, of course, Jeanette then asked Aaron about this, to which he said he knew nothing about it and that he was searching for his phone and out smoking cannabis. So Jeanette was quite happy with Aaron's reply and continued to hand over the CCTV footage to the police. And this was to remove any suspicion from Aaron. It was not to say, oh, look at this, I found this CCTV footage. It might be my son. She did it so that it kind of proved he didn't do it, if that makes sense. So Aaron was then interviewed um, as a witness by Detective Constable Gavin McKellar and Detective Sergeant Stephen Hendry. It was said that Aaron cooperated with this and answered every question. However, on the 4th of July 2018, Aaron was arrested on suspicion of murder. He was then taken to a Glasgow police station where he was remanded in custody and the following day after that he was charged with the rape and murder of six-year-old Alicia McPhail. While he was questioned at the Glasgow police station he answered no comment to everything and did not cooperate with them at all which is a big difference from when he spoke to them back in Rothsey as a witness. So seven months went by and the trial started in February 2019 in Glasgow High Court. The court was shown the CCTV footage that his mum had handed over to police of him leaving the house and returning. 
which I will actually insert here. Other CCTV footage was also shown to the jury of him walking along the shoreline at 2.25am looking as if he was carrying something in his arms. Now, the pathologist John Williams actually testified in court that Alicia's feet were uninjured and clean, suggesting that she had been carried to the area where she was found. A jacket, joggies, a t-shirt, boxer shorts and also a knife were recovered from the beach, which Jeanette Aaron's mum later said that these items did belong to her son. And also forensic scientist Stuart Bailey found Aaron's DNA on these items matching them to the clothing. Fibres from Alicia's pyjamas were also found on Aaron's trousers. It was also found that Aaron had actually used his phone to search how do police find DNA and he actually clicked on a website called Collecting DNA Evidence. So he obviously thought a lot about it and was googling to find out how police would be able to match his DNA to Alicia and also the clothes that he had dumped on the beach after he had committed this murder. One of his friends actually testified as well that he had sent a Snapchat into a group of himself and the caption was, found the guy who done it. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but if you've just murdered somebody, how can you find that in you to joke to your friends that 
you're the guy that did it. Obviously it turned out not to be a joke, but to his friends he probably wanted them to think that he was joking. Which says to me that there has to be something maybe psychologically wrong with him to even think about joking about something like that. During the court proceedings, he actually launched a defence called a Special Defence of Incrimination. And in this, he claimed that him and Tony were having a casual sexual relationship and that they'd actually met up the night that Alicia had went missing and had sex in a garage. And Tony had then taken the condom and planted his semen on Alicia to make him look like he had committed the murder. He also stated that he could never do anything like that, which means nothing, because we know he did. The trial lasted nine days at Glasgow High Court and it only took the jury three hours to deliberate and come back with a unanimous guilty verdict. The judge actually said that the evidence against Aaron was overwhelming and then Aaron appeared back in court on the 21st of March 2019 for sentencing. And when he was back in court, reports from a social worker and psychologist actually stated that Aaron had said that he was quite satisfied with the murder and that it took everything in him to stop laughing during the trial. So the judge then sentenced Aaron to life in prison with the minimum of 27 years and said that it would have been longer if he was an adult. It's something very controversial but I think the death penalty should definitely be available for people who commit crimes such as rape and murder of a six-year-old child. That little girl was innocent, she hadn't done anything wrong. All she done was go to visit her dad and her family for a couple of weeks during the summer holidays and this is how it ended for her. Such a tragic thing to happen to, to anybody but a child. Someone being able to have that in them to do that to a child is just, I have no words. The judge also stressed that his defence about Tony murdering the child and planting Aaron's DNA was basically rubbish and he stressed that Tony was completely innocent, which she was of course. Then on the 10th of September 2019, he actually successfully appealed his sentence and three years were taken off it, leaving him only having to serve 24 years in prison, which means he is now eligible for parole by the time he is 40 years old. Now, the reason he successfully appealed this sentence was because they said 27 years was excessive for his age. If you can commit such a heinous crime at the age of 16 years old, what are you going to be capable of when you're 40? I didn't really want to give my opinion on this case, but I actually read a lot about this case when it was happening and me and my friends from uni had a course where we had to go to court and watch a few trials to write an essay on how court proceedings worked and it just so happened that the day we went to Glasgow High Court was the day the trial of Aaron Campbell was starting so we actually went in and got to watch the first day of the trial and the feeling in that room was indescribable. We were sitting and had Alicia's family to the right of us and the media to the left. Police officers were coming out, giving their evidence and we were showed the knife that he used and seeing police officers that see these kind of things happening all the time, crying while giving their evidence because they were thinking about their own children whilst telling the judge and the jury what had happened was horrific. It was something that I never ever would want to experience again in my life. 
And I think that's why I feel a lot of anger with this case. I feel a lot of anger that he's only serving 24 years in prison. I think life should mean life. However, I'm going to stop myself there before I talk any more about it. If you did enjoy this video and want to see any more true crime cases, please leave any recommendations in the comments. Click the like button and subscribe. Um, by clicking that subscribe button, it does really help me. I have a goal of getting to 150 subscribers by the end of the year, which is only about six weeks away, so I don't have long. So I really would appreciate it if you clicked subscribe and yeah, I will see you again for another video next Sunday. Bye.